Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works, and we've got some questions from one of our latest videos. And we're out camping with our family. My wife and Trisha just hiked out 10 miles round trip to the Dungeness Lighthouse. And um, so we're gonna do an intro right now where you can enjoy the sunset behind us. And if you can make it out, there's Canada back over there. And then um, we'll finish up with our outro in the same location. But we're gonna go over to the campsite, sit around a fire and answer some of your questions. All right, let's go to the campfire. Okay, folks, we just came back from that gorgeous sunset. And stay tuned towards the end because we're going to show you the even more gorgeous -er sunset. And um, so we're going to answer a few questions here. We're sitting next to the fire. We'll call this a fireside chat. And so I've got three questions here. Uh, the, they all involve slide rooms. We just came out with a slide room video. So um, let's answer some of your slide room questions. So the first one's coming from Joe B. And his question is basically involving a Schwintech system for a full room slide. I won't read the full question, but his question has to do with these whole things where the whole side of the slide room of the RV goes in and out, and the whole thing is Schwintech. Do I have a problem with that? Short answer, no. Next question, no. <laughs> um, the reason I don't have a problem with that is, that, again, the weight of the Schwintech slide room is all on the rollers. Okay, so it doesn't matter how heavy this thing is, you just throw a couple more rollers under there. The purpose of those rails on the side, I'm in a very relaxing reclining chair, um, so I'm like chilling. The, um, the purpose of those racks on the top and the bottom is to keep it going in and out the same. It's not carrying the weight. So a lot of people are thinking that the Schwintech slide, those racks are carrying the weight of the room. That is totally incorrect. And if you find that that's the case, then you will have problems with your Schwintech. Um, the ceramic wheel will break, your shoe will break. You're not supposed to have all the weight on those racks. It's, it, you should be able to disengage your motors and just with your fingertips push that thing in and out because all the weight's on the rollers. So if that's the case, I don't care if it's just a small little wardrobe slide in and out or a whole room slide on and out. If they're built properly and the rollers are in the proper orientation, I don't have a problem with it. The only thing I would like to see is on the large full room slides, I would like to see the double tracks on the top and the one on the bottom. That just helps it a little bit more. It's still one motor on either side, still one drive shaft. Um, but I do like to see the double tracks on the top. It just seems to give a little bit more, I don't know, what word would I pick here? Hmm, let's see, let's pick a word. Um, integrity? Structure integrity? That's a good word. I'll go with that word. So, um, Joe, I don't have a problem with the whole room slide, none at all. Now, where you're going to get into problem is if you don't properly lubricate that, and we've done quite a few videos on lubricating your Schwintex. Uh, make sure you use the Teflon PTFE, and um, Lippert is going to say not to lubricate them, but Darren is going to say to lubricate them. Uh, you choose how you want to do this, but um, if you choose, not, I love you guys, but if you choose not to lubricate your Schwintex slide rooms, um, keep my phone number handy, <laughs> watch our videos, and because if you choose not to lubricate your Schwintex slide rooms, you will have problems with them. Um, so you can watch our videos on our playlist and, and see the problems we've had to repair overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly because people did not lubricate their slide rooms. And again, the kind of lubricate you're gonna, lubrication you're going to use is the um, PowerLube PTFV in it, which is Teflon. Okay, so Joe, hope that helps. Okay, so we have the next question from Downshift 1934. Nope, Downshift 934. 934. The lighting's not the greatest out here. Um, but I'm getting really warmed up by this fire, so I'm liking these fireside chats. Let us know if you like the fireside chat theme. We can go camping any other time. You would like me to answer your questions and get a fire going and have a good time. So um, Downshift 934, he says, help, he's in a pickle. So my first question is, how'd you get in the pickle? Um... I don't know exactly sure I know how to get you out of the pickle, but I can slice you and put you on a sandwich because pickles are awesome. So, being silly. <laughs> um, now, he's got another Schwintech problem. And uh, basically, now get your head wrapped around this one. I had to read this one a couple of times because we're going to do some geometry on this one. So, here's here's the question. Um, it seems that the bottom right, that's down here, on my respect, it, you might be looking at it the other side, but anyway, for me, wait, yeah, this is my right hand. Okay, the bottom right is hung up. So when I put the slide out, the top left and the top right go in and out, and the top right goes in and out, but the bottom one's not. So all the other corners are moving, but this one's not. Um, 
any suggestions. Okay. Um, don't run your slide room out. Problem fixed. Get out of the pickle. No, I'm being, okay. Um, I've seen this before and it's the strangest thing. And what I want you to look for is the bottom rack. I've even seen it on the top rack, but for some reason I've seen it on the bottom rack more often. You'll see all these screws that they use to screw in that rack. Okay. They're usually square headed screws only along the top track. The bottom rack only has them on the top. The top track has them on the top and bottom. These are these screws. I have seen where the screws will work their way out just a little bit. And if their screws work their way out a little bit, sometimes the head of those screws will hit that block. Okay. Um, and then it won't move. Now, another, so, so homework, make sure your screws are all seated in all the way because there's not a whole lot of clearance for that screw head to clear that bearing block. Okay, so I have seen where the screws will basically prevent it from going in and out. Another thing, you're saying that it's hung up. I'm wondering if you might have a broken spur gear. If you had a broken spur gear, then it would, it would kind of free float, okay? Um, where your other corners are, are mating properly, but this other one, sometimes it mates and sometimes it doesn't because it's lost its timing on that spur gear that's inside that shoe. Um, so you might have a spur gear broken. Um, so look for that. Um, here's how you would test that. If you go above the bottom bearing block, take your fingers and put them behind that wiper seal, you can feel the drive shaft there, okay? And if someone on the inside were to move the slide room in or out, you can take your little fingers and just feel that drive shaft turning. And if the drive shaft's turning, you could also take your eye and watch that bearing block. If that, that bearing block should not pivot, it should be bonded into that rack. So if you see that bearing block moving at all, then that would be an indication that that little plastic shoe that rides in that track above the the, the mm, splines, if you will, um, has maybe broken off. There's a, uh, I call it a fin uh, on your bearing block. You've got a fin. Uh, Schwintech has changed these designs multiple times. Sometimes a fin comes out and then it's got a piece on the top. Sometimes a piece goes down. The whole bearing block could be wide or narrow, tall or short. They keep changing the design. Sometimes your fin has a slot in it. Sometimes it's solid. Sometimes it's got a notch on the top. Sometimes it's solid on the top. Different shoes. There's, it's just, Swintech, I love you, but quit changing this design. Anyway, I've seen where the fin breaks off. I've seen where the shoe breaks in half. I've seen where the spur gear has broken a tooth off. And like I said earlier, I've seen where the screws will work their way out. And as that screw head's trying to clear that bearing block, it will get caught up on, the, on that. So those are some things to look for. Um, hopefully it's just a, a screw and you drive your screw in, you're fixed. If it turns out to be the bearing block in any way, shape, or form, or the spur gear, the only way that I know of to fix that is take the whole H column off, take the racks off, because all those bearing blocks get fed in from the end of that rack. And so the only way to get it on the end of the rack is to take the thing away and um, get it in there. Now, if your slide room is one of these really wide ones, not wide the length of the RV, but it comes out really far, you might be able to leave the H column screwed to your RV, but just take off a bunch of those screws and you might be able to pull it off from the wall a little bit and put it in there. Um, I have read and I have heard that there are people that can put the bearing block in on the rack without taking the rack off. I'd love to see somebody do that. I have yet to figure out how to do that. As far as I'm concerned, it needs to go in on the end where everything lines up and everything's nice and smooth. I don't know how any other way to do that is. So those are some things I would try to say try to stay away from the pickles um, and that way you won't get in them anymore. So I hope that helps some of the things to try. Uh, if you want, feel free to leave a comment and let us know what you found and we'll just throw that into collective knowledge of our Schwinn technology here. All right, so I hope that helps you. Okay, our next question I have on my list is coming from David Walton. And um, hey, here's an idea. Why don't you guys leave where you're coming from? I love hearing where you guys are all over the world. It's kind of a, a fun that we kind of hear where everybody's at since we're all in this together here. But um, we just did a video on the, um, it was the, uh, let's see, the, the old power gear system. Uh, it would be called the, the Lippert uh, through frame. I don't remember. 
But anyway, it was the old, I know of it as the old power gear system. That was a video that we did where we replaced the motor and had that little black duckbill thing on it, okay? Um, and he watched the video and he has that same system on his RV. And his questions are very simple. It's a very good question. Um, any tips on maintaining this so it doesn't happen? And I mentioned it in that video and I'll mention it again. Um, for This is Darren's mm, uh, counsel to you, <laughs> okay? Um, a few minutes ago, I just said on your Schwintex slide rooms, I want you to lubricate them, okay? On this system, I do not want you to lubricate them, okay? It's a very simple question. It's, it's a very simple reason why. The reason I want you to lubricate your Schwintex systems is because you have that little plastic shoe that's riding in that aluminum profile and the coefficient of friction and expansion and contraction is gonna cause that thing to get binded up and, and hard. The, the power gear system that we worked on in this video where we replaced the motor, if you look at that system, there's no rubber shoe riding in any track. You've got a ram with the teeth welded on the bottom of it that goes in and out. And that whole ram is riding on little plastic wheels. So the whole weight of that is, ah, the weight of the room, let's be clear here. Let, let, me, let me talk about this and I'm gonna answer your question. So on that um, power gear system, the only place that that room is connected is at the pivot point where that ram attaches to the box that's the slide room, okay? The rest of the room is just along for the ride. It's not attached to the top, not attached on in the corners. It's only attached to the very bottom. So that ram does all the pulling and pushing and that room kind of pops up if it's a drop floor or if it, it doesn't matter if it's drop floor or not, but the weight of the room is riding on the floor. And that's why a lot of you guys will have carpeting where that slide room is. They're, they're, the bottom part of that slide room is kind of slippery and they bring it up and they ride it on carpeting. Okay, so in the earlier days, we would rip out the carpeting and put in hardwood flooring for people. And we'd have to get these things called slickers that would not scuff up the floor. Okay, now, why am I saying this? Because the weight of the room is riding on the carpet. There is no rollers there. Some, uh, some of you will have rollers. Some of you will. Different manufacturers have done this different ways. The reason I'm saying don't lubricate that, though, is because the only part that's moving is the ram on these little poly wheels. Okay, so you can, the poly wheels don't really need to be lubricated, so you can keep that dry. We have seen problems where people will lubricate that with a product that's called RV lubricant, slide, slide room lubricant. Hey, we're in our campground having a fun time with our friends and family. So, and so are they. Um, but um, where was I? Oh. There's a product out there, it's in a white can with blue writing on it or something along the lines, and they talk about, uh, the can says that it's a, it's a lubricant for slide rooms. And it goes on, it makes a white foamy thing, and then what I would ask you to do is if you're using that product, I want you to go touch it after you've had it sit on there for a couple of months. And I want you to report back what you find. My experience is it's sticky. There's a product out there that is advertising itself as an RV slide lubricant, and you put it on there and it's sticky. And if you put lubricant on your slide room and it's sticky, I can't tell you how many calls we've had where problem or people are having problems with their slide rooms and they lubricate it, they lubricate it, they lubricate it and the stuff's sticky and it burns up the motors because the motors are having to work too hard. It causes components to break. So that's why I say on the power gear system, leave that dry. If you're gonna spray it with anything, then my old favorite CRC Power Lube with Teflon, if you're gonna, do anything with it okay so how do you it's getting dark um uh, uh any tips on maintenance keep it clean okay some of the lubricants that you like to use i've heard a lot of people like to use silicone well silicone has a tendency to collect dirt and dust uh, we don't want these systems to collect dirt and dust because it works inside those bearings and it starts to squeak and squeal now one thing about the power gear system is it does have a tendency to squeak and squeal. There's two places that I would want you to lubricate those, and both of these are not easy. The first part that's going to make the squeaky sounding noise on these parts where the ram comes out and the, 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 the tooth bar is welded to the bottom of the ram and it's got the square drive shaft. The other end of the ram that you can't see is inside of a C-channel way up inside 
And so if you can visualize this, this ram coming out, it's cantilevered this way, and there's a roller at the top that's rolling itself out. It's a steel roller, and it's riding inside of the top of the C-channel. If you could get some lubricant in there, that's where a lot of your squeaking is coming from. That's one of the places your squeaking is coming from. If you have a underbelly, sometimes you could just cut a little access door and just get it all up in there uh, and then get uh, underbelly tape to tape that up. The other place it's going to squeak, you're going to need a, a floor jack or a bottle jack. I did mention it in that video. You have to take the weight off of that uh, gear pack because where the drive shaft goes through that 15 or 18 tooth gear, you need to get that lubricated. And the best way I've found is to take the weight off of it. Sometimes I'll take that gear pack apart, pull the bolt out, lubricate it, put it back in. That is if it's really making a lot of squeaky sounds. So those are some two ideas. If I can get my hands on one and I have the time, I'll do a video of how that, but don't pro I'm not gonna make any promises because we can't, I don't have a crystal ball to know what service calls we have coming up on any given day. So uh, to your question, what can you do to maintain that, keep it clean? If you're gonna lubricate it, I'm a big fan of Teflon. I'm not a big fan of silicone. Um, and if you do want to lubricate it, lubricate it with Teflon. If it's making squeaky sounds, there's a two places. One is a wheel way up on the inside, and the other one is the, the, the gear pack. The, the bolt that goes through the gear pack is where it's lubricating. So those are the only two places you should lubricate it. Keep your teeth clean. The roller wheels are plastic poly wheels. There's nothing to lubricate there. Let those do their thing. And then a lot of times coming in and out of that ram, they have these little poly glides that are little plastic pieces that are all in the corners of that. Let those do their job. There's don't, no reason to lubricate any of that. So, hope that helps. It's getting dark. My fire's going out. Let me stoke this. And as advertised, we do have a little bit of a surprise for you. Um, as the sun was going down, we recorded our outro right as it's going down. So we have a special sunset outro for you. So um, thanks for watching. And I hope this answers your questions and let us know where you're located and if you enjoy these fireside chats. And if you so, we'll go camping more often. We're going to make some s'mores. Okay, off to the outro. Enjoy the sunset, guys. Thanks for watching. Okay, folks, we brought you back over here. Uh, we're done with your questions. Hope you found that valuable. Um, I know you probably can't see me, but I wanted you to enjoy that sunset over Victoria, Canada on Vancouver Island. That's just stunning. So we wanted to share that with you, even though you probably can't see me very well. So if this added value to you, thumb it up the video, share it with your friends, um, subscribe to our channel, you know the drill. So happy camper, St. Mario of your works. Until the next video, this is Darren signing off.